Welcome to Preaching That Matters. A place you can find apostolic Pentecostal preaching. A place where all generations can be fed with the Word of God. We hope you enjoy. For facilitating a meeting like this for all of us to come to and to enjoy and to be lifted and to receive vision and help from the Lord. He reminds me of the story that an immigrant in Southern California tells around about himself. He tells of the time that he was a schoolboy, just a fresh immigrant from a foreign country came there to Southern California, and he was told to write a paper about what he wanted to be when he grew up. What were his dreams? What was his vision? His aspiration in life? And he wrote for the teacher with the best descriptive words that he could put of grandoise ideas of this large horse ranch. He described all of the things that he was going to have there, and the teacher took his report and gave him an F on that report and said, go write another one that's more realistic. He tells the story of how that he thought about it, thought about it long and hard, and he turned the exact same paper back into his teacher. The teacher said, you know, you're going to get an F for this. And he looked at the teacher and said, you can give me an F, but you can't take away my dream. Amen. So the dream of an apostolic church restored in the last days with all the original equipment. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That dream, if it brings displeasure from whoever, if it brings the low mark from whoever, thank God for men like Brother Howard that say, you're not going to take away my dream. You're not going to take it away. We are believing God, amen, in this last hour for what God can do, restoration for his people, amen. Psalms chapter 51, amen. Don't get real worried here tonight. As I was sitting on the plane, there were three other preachers on the same flight from Phoenix with me, and I was working through my little electronic Bible there on the plane to uh, come up with a lot of different scriptures and however many there are in the Bible to do with the subject I'm going to talk about. One by one, they came by and made little comments to me and said, uh, you're on page two already. That's uh, working on page three there. They said, you, you might as well quit now, Brother White. You might as well quit. And uh, I finally told one of them, I said, this plane better hurry up and land in Tulsa or I'll be preaching all night long. <laughs> so don't get too worried. I may surprise you all. Amen. Psalms chapter 51. Now I want to read to you there a very familiar verse and talk to you of the burden that I have tonight for this service. Psalms 51 and verse number 12, David said, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. I want to preach to you tonight about restoration of joy. Restoration of joy. There's a lot of other things. I'm sure are going to be talked about, preached about, mentioned in this meeting this year, as there have been in previous years. But I want to tell you something. Without a restoration of joy among the apostolic ranks, for all of us, we're not going to see a whole lot of the other things that we're craving for and longing for. I want God to give us an understanding and a restoration of joy that David prayed about. 
Amen. And start God for. Would you pray with me now? Mighty God, in the name of Jesus, we love you, we worship you, we glorify you, God. How great you are, Savior. How wonderful you are, Lord. How marvelous you are, God. We are nothing, but you are everything, Lord. I'm simply asking you, Lord, for my brethren and my sisters, God, that have come from churches across North America. I pray, Lord, that that you have burdened my heart with tonight, God, will minister strength, Lord. Oh, God. Oh, God. We're not going to wait till we get home, Lord, to get it restored. We're not waiting for Friday night, God. I'm asking you, Lord, to do it tonight with your glory and your splendor, your presence and your might, God, in the name of Jesus Christ. And all the people said amen. amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Restoration of joy. It was the prayer of David that God would restore unto him the joy of his salvation. I was reading earlier this week in the Encyclopedia Judaica. Perhaps you have read from that. I'm sure there are those here that have. But I was reading the section about the Hasidic Jews. And it was a long, long section that was there talking a lot about that sect, as it's called, of Judaism that's in the world today. For those of you that are not real familiar with them, they are the ultra-Orthodox Jew. They are the group of Judaism that is convinced, not only mentally, but in their lifestyle, in the way that they dress, in what they do with their hair, their beard, with all of the trimmings and the outward appearances that are there. They are convinced that literal adherence to the literal commands of the Word of God is not an option, that it's something that is absolute and there's no way around it, there's no reason nor rationale that anybody can give that can take that away from them. And so it is that group of Jews that live and stick by the written Word, the Old Testament, of course, that they follow by. They are to Judaism, I'm sure, in some respects, what you and I are to the Christendom of our world today. They are the radicals that absolutely won't budge, no matter how unpopular, no matter what anybody has to say about it. They are committed that they are going to hold fast to those teachings and they're going to live by them and follow by them. I, I knew all of those things, but as I began to read there in their encyclopedia, the amazing thing to me that I did not know is that the Hasidic Jew has taught and preached and practiced for many, many, many generations that their ability to retain all of those external distinctives that they have that sets them apart from all of the rest, their ability to hold on to that was directly connected to their ability to keep joy the predominant theme in their midst. Amen. And inside of the encyclopedia there, it gave a tremendous amount of pages that, that showed of the different songs of joy that they sing that's unique unto them. It showed pictures of them all together with all their get them up that they wear, their special way of dressing. And it showed pictures of them all dancing together in joy. 
it showed them as they celebrated and explained that their philosophy runs deep, that they long ago have figured out that if they want what they have to be carried on by the next generation, that it absolutely must be more than the cold letter of the law. Amen. It absolutely has to be equally yoked and married together with the commitment to them and to pass on to their children. It said, wearing all of this garb like we do is not supposed to put a scowl on your face and take the joy out of worship and take the response uh, and the happiness that is there. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. Sounds in some ways very, very scriptural to me what the Bible teaches that the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. Amen. And they take back to their uh, scriptural roots that are there and show that there are more scriptures, written scriptures in the Bible, and that's strictly the Old Testament for them, but that there are more scriptures in the Bible giving commandments about joy than there are about those things that they hold dear, that they will not change for absolutely anybody. Amen. And so they make their declaration that since we're literalists and we take the Word of God exactly at face value what it says. It tells us about our hair, and we do it. It tells us about how men dress, they say, and we do that, how ladies are to dress, and we do that. Hallelujah. But the same book tells us and describes uh, the ingredient that must be a part uh, of God's separated people, and that is the mixture of joy that permeates, uh, amen, every part uh, of their religious worship and their service and their commitment uh, unto the almighty God. Hallelujah. 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 Well, I, like so many of you, have memorized a handful of scriptures in the Bible that have to do with joy. But when they talk to an apostolic preacher about the abundance of scriptures in the Bible that are there, that are overwhelming majority, amen, in there about joy, it put a hunger deep down inside of my heart to say, God, I want to search the book. Amen. If we are going to be your people in this last day, hallelujah. If we are going to shine a light for the world to see, uh, those dead, dried up Jews uh, have never yet uh, had one ounce of a taste uh, of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. They have never felt uh, anything like what you and I felt uh, when we came up out of that water with baptism uh, in the name of Jesus Christ uh, for the remission of our sins. Uh, they've never known uh, what it was like like you and I have enjoyed over and over and over and over again. And if they are that committed to joy, I want to do my part to help the people of God, uh, amen, get greater committed to it uh, than what we have ever been in all of our life. Uh, and pray and ask God uh, to restore unto me. i got to have it, God. Uh, i got to have living in my life more 
more than a set of rules, uh, more than all uh, of the catechisms that's taught. Uh, I've got to have an overflowing, uh, abundant joy unspeakable uh, that is evident uh, by my countenance uh, for the whole world to see uh, what I got on the inside uh, is greater than just what you see on the outside. Uh, I've got the Shekinah of God living in me. Hallelujah. 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 As a matter of fact, the Hebrew word for joy, the root word there, similar to what you and I know as the Shekinah, it simply means to be bright. Amen. That's not talking about intelligence. That's talking about the radiance of our countenance and what we have down on the inside of us. It's kind of like a battery-operated light. Amen. When that light starts getting dim and is not too bright, it lets everybody know the power source is draining out. Uh-huh. It, it don't take a rocket scientist uh, to figure that out, that something uh, is going wrong with the supply of power that is supposed to be there. I searched through the scripture, and I, I won't give you all but just a few of them anyhow, of examples in the Bible where the scripture talks to us about joy. Amen. The first one that I want to mention is in Chronicles 15, talking about the returning of the ark back again unto Israel, bringing it to Jerusalem there. And I've often read that story, and I've thought, my, what a celebration. David was just beside himself in the dancing and the leaping and the rejoicing. But I found out it was more than just David involved. Uh, for First Chronicles 15 said that David commanded the chief Levite to appoint brethren to play instruments uh, and sing by lifting up the voice with joy. Hallelujah. He said, man, what we are fixing to do uh, is a bubbling, joyful experience. Uh, I don't care how good you can hit the notes in the choir if the soprano and the alto and the tenors get all mixed up. Uh, that's not what matters to the king. Uh, he said, I want the voice uh, lifted up with joy. Hallelujah. With joy in your heart, uh, lift up your voice. Uh, and the Bible said they did not wait uh, until they got back to Jerusalem to do it. Uh, because the scripture said, uh, amen, that they took the ark uh, out of the house of Obed-Edom with joy. We're a long ways from church, uh, a long ways from Jerusalem. Uh, but we're getting ready to go. Uh, and so we're going to start off uh, on a level of joy so when we break through the gates uh, of Jerusalem uh, there will be dancing uh, shouting uh, leaping uh, rejoicing uh, amen uh, do it with joy he said <laughs> praise God praise God praise God praise God hallelujah hallelujah Hey Amen. Some of you old sour pussies are going to smile before this night's over. Woo! Some old stone faces, they might crack. Uh, but Lord, being my helper, hey amen, I'm going to try to get you to see what you're missing out. Uh, hey amen. Without a restoration uh, of joy inside of your life. We know the story of Jehoshaphat. 
and the great battle and the victory and the songs that were sang about holiness unto the Lord. And oh, what a tremendous victory that was there. And hundreds of sermons have been preached about that and how great it is. We shout and dance uh, about the singing and praise and about the holiness unto the Lord. And we need that. We're going to preach that until we're all dead in the grave and our kids and our grandkids, hey man, going to keep on preaching it. Hallelujah. But after they got all done with that, uh, that wasn't the end of the story. Hey man, the Bible tells us that Jehoshaphat had a victory march back to Jerusalem uh, and he led the pack. Hallelujah. He said, wait a minute, guys. Uh, God has given us a marvelous victory. God has done uh, all of these great things here. Uh, he said, I'll tell you what we're going to do. Uh, you've had three days uh, of gathering up the spoils of battle. Uh, and this is the fourth day. Uh, he said, we ain't stopping now. Uh, hallelujah. I, I wonder about people, uh, hey amen, that their Sunday night blessing uh, fizzles out by Monday afternoon. Uh, he said, it's been four days, uh, hey amen, since the victory was done. Uh, but I ain't near done celebrating uh, what God did for us. Uh, and the Bible said uh, that he led them uh, in a victory march. Uh, the scripture said to Jerusalem with joy. To Jerusalem with joy. Uh, he said, come on, guys. Uh, it's still good to shout about uh, what God did last week, uh, last month, uh, last year. Uh, we can celebrate uh, and give honor. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Amen. Woo. <laughs> Woo. You know the story. We've all memorized Nehemiah 8 and 10. The reading of the law caused them to weep. Nehemiah came and said, come on, knock it off. He said, eat the fat, drink the sweet, don't be sorrowful. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. Right. Hallelujah. The joy of the Lord is your strength. He didn't say it's this wall that we're fixing to build around Jerusalem. We, we ain't got that done yet. We're still working on that. And you ain't going to wait till that wall gets up before some of you guys start cutting the rug, he said. Hey, man, we're going to have to get it straight right now while we're in the process of doing the Lord's work. Hey, man, while we're building, while we're working in the midst of the heat of the battle, we got to understand that the joy of the Lord is our strength. Hey, man, that's where it comes from. Hey, man, when they got the wall completed uh, they rejoiced again the Bible said uh, for God had made them uh, rejoice with great joy with their children with their wives also and the children Woo, hallelujah I, I long for the days uh, amen that we can see families together in the house of God. Uh, amen. Mama and daddy and the children uh, expressing the same joy unto God uh, as they worship uh, and magnify the Lord. Uh, amen. The Bible tells us in the book of Esther, the eighth chapter, that when they finally got victory over Haman's plot uh, that was to destroy the Jews that's there, Mordecai had a wardrobe change. Uh, he took off the sackcloth uh, and he put on what the Bible said uh, was royal apparel of uh, blue and white uh, and fine linen and purple. Uh, and the Bible said the city of Shushan rejoiced uh, and the Jews had light, uh, had gladness, uh, had joy, and had honor. Hallelujah. I'm all too afraid uh, that sometimes the circles that I run with uh, are satisfied uh, to just have light. Yeah. 
Uh -huh. They're totally content uh, to brag about how much light we've got uh, and how beautiful that light is. Uh, I'll rejoice with you about it. Uh, but say, let's go on past that uh, and get some gladness uh, and get some joy uh, along with the light uh, that is shined in the evening time uh, for you and I to rejoice together. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Job said in chapter 20 and verse number 5 that the joy of the hypocrite is but for a moment. Turn to your neighbor and say, how long does your joy last? Uh-huh. 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 Oh, yeah. Yeah, how long's your joy last anyway? Uh, hey, man, you mark it down. It's nothing but a hypocrite. Uh, if the joy is only for a moment, uh, if it's only the little short-lived buzz, uh, hey, man, of an apostolic uh, restoration conference, uh, and you get home, uh, and you can't do the same dance, uh, and you can't run the aisles uh, with the same fervency, uh, you double-dog hypocrite. Uh, your joy is only for a moment, uh, but the joy joy of a child of God. It goes on and on and on and on. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Sit down. David had several things to say about joy. He said, chapter 30, verse 5, shout for joy, all ye that are upright in heart. Whoa, whoa, can the reverse implication be true? I would sure hope it can. He said, if you're upright in heart, you manifest it with outward demonstration. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. It, if you got more than just the clothes right. He didn't say if you're, you're upright uh, in your appearance. If you got more than just the hair right. Uh, but if you got the heart right. Uh, hallelujah. If you got the heart right. Uh, you just shout for joy. Because it feels so good. Uh, to have your heart right with God. Uh, to have it at peace uh, with your maker. And your creator. Hallelujah. Woo. Amen, amen, amen. He said in chapter 43, verse 4, that at the altar, when I get around the altar of God, he said, there's where God is my exceeding joy. Woo. Nobody has to beg me to come up around the front and pray with sinners. Uh -huh. Nobody has to pull me out of the lobbies, David said. Uh, amen. When there's a whole lot of good stuff happening out there, somebody said. When there's a move of God going up around the altar. <laughs> he said, my exceeding joy is right up there at the altar in the presence of the Almighty God, uh, basking in his presence, uh, the beauty of the Lord. Uh, Solomon said, Ecclesiastes 5 and 20, that God answers us in the joy of our heart. You've been having a hard time getting an answer for prayer? Mm, hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, God forgot your address? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You, you having a hard time getting God to talk to you? <laughs> he said God answers us uh, in the joy, in the joy of our hearts. Hallelujah. When he sees something on the inside uh, that's so overjoyed about what God's already did for us. Uh-huh. 
and not spending all our time begging and pleading uh, and carrying on uh, for what we want God to do uh, that he hadn't already done like a bunch of spoiled brats. Uh, he said, man, I love to answer in the joy of the heart uh, where somebody has got joy down inside of their heart. Uh, Isaiah said with joy, we draw water from the wells uh, of salvation. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Chapter 55, look it up. Uh, Isaiah made a connection uh, between the word not returning void in one verse uh, and the next verse, God's people going out with joy. We get all worried and upset. Why our evangelism? Why our outreach isn't working? Why the Bible studies that we taught aren't panning out? Uh, why this isn't happening? Uh, why that isn't happening? Uh, God, you promised uh, the word wouldn't return void. Didn't you say it, God? Uh, I'm holding your duty bound by this scripture right here. And God said, read the next one, would you? Read the next one, would you? My plan is my word. Uh, will not return void. Uh, but he said, hey, uh, your part in the action, uh, amen, your part is God's people uh, are to go out with joy, with joy, with joy, you're to pass out tracks, uh, with joy, uh, you're to knock on doors, uh, with joy, we, uh, we're to teach Bible studies, uh, with joy, we're to tell them in the marketplace, uh, come and see what I found, uh, come and see what I found, uh, with joy, with joy. We do it. God, we need a restoration of joy. Uh, woo, sit down. I'm not quite done. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Isaiah 66 and 5 is a well-known scripture that all of us have. Amen. No, of the Assemblies of God in 1914. Amen. 178 oneness preachers walked out on them because of our stand for this oneness message. And, and we, we know part of that scripture. Amen. That your brethren hated you. That they cast you out for my name's sake. But we don't know the rest of that scripture. Amen. That said the Lord shall appear to your joy. Mm, hallelujah. Brother Westberg, this oneness revelation is supposed to bring joy to those that get it. Uh -huh. It's supposed to bring more than just a theologian's concept of how we can argue the deity of Jesus Christ. It's supposed to bring joy. He said, I, I'm going to appear to your joy. Amen. Give it. Put it down inside of you. Amen. The New Testament is full. I, I mean, the wise men in Matthew chapter 2, verse 10, just seeing the star of Jesus Christ uh, rejoiced with exceeding great joy. They didn't say, God, in Tulsa, Oklahoma, this week, if you'll show me a blinded eye to be opened, uh, I will rejoice with exceeding great joy. Man, they didn't ask for nothing. Uh, they just saw a star that was going to lead them to where the Messiah was at. Uh, just a star. That's all it was. Uh, and it got exceeding great joy of response out of them uh, that said, thank God, uh, we're marching on to greater revelation uh, of truth, of understanding uh, of what God's purpose is in the earth, uh, what he's trying to do. Uh, Luke chapter 1, verse 44 uh, I mean, simply hearing Mary's voice uh, caused John the Baptist uh, in the womb to leap for joy. Now, that's Mary. That's Mary. You ain't never heard Mary say anything, have you? Thank God. No matter how many billboards they put up around America that said, Virgin Mary still speaks. She ain't doing it, Bubba. I'm here to tell you she's not. Amen. She's dead in the grave and she's gone. Amen. That wasn't even Jesus speaking. It was just the carrier of Jesus. Right. Whew. Hallelujah. 
just the carrier of Jesus. Uh, amen. Her voice uh, calls baby John the Baptist, uh, hallelujah, to do a little double backflip uh, inside of the womb there uh, and say, Mama, hurry up and let me get out of here. Uh, this is exciting stuff. What's going on? Uh, hey, let me tell you, we hear the voice of the Almighty God uh, night after night after night after night, uh, and we ain't tied up uh, inside a little womb. Uh, and some of you still can't get out of your chair, uh, still can't get up, uh, still can't do any leaping, uh, still can't do any rejoicing, uh, still can't get with it. Uh, amen. With joy, just the sound uh, caused him to leap. Hallelujah. Sit down. Amen. The book of Acts, hallelujah, is full of scriptures about joy. Amen. I, I didn't realize Peter's sermon on the day of Pentecost, uh, amen, included David's promise uh, of being made full of joy. Right. Read it. We know Acts 2.38. That's 2.28. That promise of being full of joy. <laughs> Woo. You say those 3,000 folks that were there that day, they wasn't speaking tongues, my friend. They heard somebody say that my miserable, empty life uh -huh, has a promise uh, of being full of joy. Uh -huh, being full of joy. And I'm looking around here, hey amen, uh, at the first 120 wine tasters, uh, hey amen, that got in here first, uh, and it looks like it's a true prediction. Uh, it looks like they are full of joy. Uh, it looks like by their actions, uh, a stumbling around uh, like a bunch of drunk men, uh, that, that it really is true uh, that they're full of joy. Uh, and we want some of that. Uh, we want to experience that. I'm telling you, the world that I live in, uh, it may be different in the Bible Belt, uh, but the world where I live in, uh, all that matters to them uh, is some way, preacher, does your church, uh, does your people, uh, does your beliefs uh, have any joy? I can't get it anywhere else. Uh, I can't find it anywhere else. Uh, is there any way uh, my life could be full uh, of joy that you preach about? Chapter number eight, sit down. The Samaritan revival, read it over again. It included miracles, unclean spirits coming out, uh, the lame being healed, and great joy. Yes. Uh -huh. We want all of the above, Lord, but uh, I'm getting a little too old to express any more of that joy stuff. Uh, I, I'm not too sure I, I, I'm up to any of that, Lord. Uh, amen. I, I, I just can't do it. Let me tell you, it's a package deal, friend. It's a package deal. When revival came to a city in the book of Acts, uh, all of the signs and wonders uh, were accompanied with great joy. Great joy. The people of God exhibited uh, unto their city. They didn't walk about, ooh, ba 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 ooh, ba 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 ooh, ba 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 ooh, 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 ooh. And everybody cowered down in fear. And, oh, I'm scared to death of them religious radicals that say, I better go to that church and pray to it. Not on your life. They saw in our pews and well that <laughs> was bubbling over in the marketplace, bubbling over in the workplace, uh, bubbling over everywhere they went. Uh, hallelujah. Great joy uh, was a part of that New Testament church. Uh, and God honored it uh, with signs and wonders uh, that were a part of it. Hallelujah. Sit down. 13th chapter of Acts, they had a citywide revival. It had a disappointing end to it. 
disciples that uh, they prayed through, and I guess the gains that they thought they'd gained and the people that prayed through, obviously a lot of them didn't even stick around to the end of the revival. Matter of fact, it got so bad, the heat got on so bad, the end of the revival, the apostles are outside the city shaking the dust off of their feet. You know, this great big campaign that they were going to do and how they were going to affect that city. And, oh, man, terribly disappointing end to it that was there. And the Bible said, hallelujah, the Bible said God looked at those disciples. And it said when they got all done, instead of God letting them go away licking their wounds, the Scripture said the disciples were filled, number one, with joy. And number two, and with the Holy Ghost. God said, what you guys need right now, worse than anything, is not just to talk in tongues all over again. You need that to get your spirits pumped up, but right now you need a baptism of joy to come first. You're all beat down, pushed down, thinking, man, hey, hey ain't nobody in there wants our gospel. Uh, come on, shake a mo little more dust off of that, would you? You ain't seen how hard it is in my city, man. You ain't tied to pastor in Burbank. Uh, you ain't pastored next door to Hollywood, man. You can't believe how terrible and awful, and you can get all caught up on all that junk. Uh, hey, man, and God said, you know what you need? Uh, hey, man, and I got it for you. You need a baptism of joy, a joy. Just the thrill uh, that you're my child. Uh, you're full of my spirit. Uh, you're preaching my gospel. Uh, hallelujah. You're telling the world about it. Uh, he baptized them with joy. Uh, amen. Oh, I'd love for that to happen uh, right here tonight uh, in this service uh, for some deep down children of God uh, that have had disappointments uh, to have a baptism of joy that comes from the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Be seated. 20th chapter of Acts. Amen. Paul made an awful proud statement, Elder Bossman. He said, I am aiming. You want to know what my aim is? He said, it's to finish my course with joy. <laughs> don't, 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 don't tell me how you started as a new convert with all kinds of joy. No, no. Don't bore me with how many laps you took around the church uh, your first six months in the church. <laughs> Uh -huh. don't, don't, don't tell me how much joy that you had, uh, amen, six months into the journey uh, or somewhere down the road. Uh, hallelujah. He, he said, I am going to finish my course with joy. Uh, I started out uh, with goosebumps all over me uh, when the light knocked me down uh, on the road to Damascus. Uh, hallelujah. Planning on finishing uh, this course uh, with joy in my heart, uh, with joy in my countenance, uh, with joy in me. Uh, I'm going all the way uh, to the finish line uh, with joy. Woo! Hallelujah! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sit down. Lady in my congregation several years ago. She was bragging about standing up testifying about how she received the Holy Ghost at the Azusa Street Mission. How glorious it was back there. How wonderful and how fabulous that it was. So one day I got tired of hearing the stories out of my falls and not seeing anything, you know, out of her. I just went to her in private. I wasn't going to embarrass, you know, the elder. Amen. I, I just went to her, elderly lady, that is. Went to her in private, and I up around the altar, and I said, uh, Mr. White, I said, you know, it's been good hearing all these testimonies, but how about for the sake of all these younger generations here, could, could you just have a mind and demonstrate a little bit of that just? 
the Spirit led her over to another church. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Elder, let me tell you, you planning on finishing it with your... I thank God for this dear elder right here. Uh, hallelujah. Man, as long as I can remember. Hey, man, he's been giving out them war hoops uh, and carrying on. Uh, hey, man, cheering on the preaching of the word of God, the worship. Uh, hey, man, somebody preaches about one God. Uh, hey, man, it'll light his fuse. I promise you. Uh, I promise you. Uh, the joy. I'll be bubbling out of there. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 1 24 that one of the roles of us preachers uh, is to be helpers of your joy. Oh, uh, I just hate it. I just hate it. I just hate it when the pastor gets up, you know, and he says, hey, come on, we need a little joy around here. Come on, come on, let's sing a little song here. Hey, man, come on, now we're going to sing this song again, and everybody's going to leap for joy. <laughs> Got to potty train my baby right now. Head him out to the room. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Woo, hallelujah, hallelujah. If you expressed a little bit more joy during service, we wouldn't have to do so much to be helpers of your joy. Uh-huh. We, we wouldn't have to go to such extents uh, of trying to help you out uh, to get that joy uh, bubbling uh, inside of you uh, like God wants it to. Uh, hey, man, yeah, nobody ought to have to tell you to leap. Uh, nobody ought to have to tell you to run. Uh, nobody else has to tell you to dance. Uh, it ought to just be spontaneous uh, from the joy that's in your heart. Hallelujah! Restore that joy inside of me, Lord! <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah! I'm almost done. Sit down. Amen. Last I checked, it was just today. In the listing of the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians chapter number 5. Amen. Faith was still five slots below joy. The last I checked, I mean, you may not believe that that's totem pole mentality, but the Bible tells us the greatest is love, and it's in number one slot. <laughs> and right behind it, hot on its heels. Five slots above faith, and ooh, brother, could I ever get this crowd buzzing right now if I was preaching about faith? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Woo, preach it to me, because I love it too. Hey, Amen. I'm telling you, I love faith preaching, uh, but joy still five slots ahead of it. Uh, hey, Amen. Right behind love. Uh, he said, uh, if you want to check it out, uh, if the fruit's growing in you, man, uh, he said, joy is right up there. Uh, hey, Amen. Right up there by the head of the pack. Uh, hey, Amen. Showing, demonstrating in your life, uh, everywhere you go, uh, everybody you see, uh, they see joy. They see joy. They see joy working in your life, uh, manifesting itself uh, to the world around you. Sit down one more time. Somebody come to the music and I'll shut up. I walked out of a meeting real similar to this kind of meeting. Hey, man, felt the power of God. Phenomenal way. Oh, it was so wonderful. Hey, man, I took an elder friend of mine to lunch that day, the afternoon break, and I said, whoa, wasn't that good church today? Elder Webb, and he said, oh, yeah. He said that. It's just like the old stomp lot, isn't it? I said, the old what? He said, it's just like the old stomp lot, isn't it? I said, uh, man, you have to clue me in on that one, Elder. What do you mean? 
He said, oh, you ain't never heard of that. He said, you know, where I was raised out in West Texas. He said, the good rancher, farmer. He said, he always built a special pen for his horses or his mules that had to work hard in the heat of the day. It wasn't all the way back to the barn, but it, when it was time to take an iced tea break or just cool off in the shade from the heat of the day, he said we'd, we'd build a little pen, and inside of that pen, they'd just take that old beast of burden in there, take off his saddle, put it over on the fence post, take off the harness, take off whatever it was he was doing. Just give him a little reprieve from the struggles that he was going through. He said and the reason why it got the name of the stomp lot, he said, is because them horses and mules and donkeys got so excited about just getting that load lifted off of them for a little while. Uh-huh. <laughs> they wouldn't sit over there and yawn and say, hurry back, I'm a glutton for punishment, man. Hey, I can't wait to get back this burden on my shoulder. Hey, man, he'd let him inside that gate and take off that stuff. And that old beast of burden would just start. Just start kicking his. You had never seen it? I've seen them horses get so excited that they'd get on their back and get all four big ones up in the air. Woo! They call us holy rollers. But that's all right. You see, the master that we serve is a mighty, mighty good master. And he knows the weight of the burden that you carried all the way up to this very moment uh, that you're inside this church service right now. He knows the strain of the load uh, that all of us uh, go under from time to time. Uh, hallelujah. And his word said uh, that he had never put more on us uh, than we could bear. Uh, Hey, man, uh, now, now let me tell you something. Uh, you can just go ahead and have a nervous breakdown if you want to, uh, but don't blame it on God. Uh, don't blame it uh, on the load of the church. Uh, don't blame it uh, on the work of the kingdom of God. Uh, because this good master that you and I serve, uh, he knows how to lift the load uh, from off of us uh, and let us express uh, a little joy in the house of God, a little relief from our burdens. He knows how to give us a reprieve from it all. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He's lifting it right now off of some of you. He's lifting the load right now off of your shoulders so you can have a restoration of joy, of joy. <laughs> you, you just marked my words. You just mark my words for every one of us that's come to this meeting. It may not be everybody tonight, but for every one of us that's come to this meeting, at one time or another in the next three days, the good master is going to turn this house into a stomp lot for you. Yeah, he is. Whatever's been heavy on your mind, whatever's been burdening your heart, whatever's been taking your sleep away from you, 
whatever's been bugging you. Uh, got you all tied up in knots. Uh, he's going to untie those knots. Uh, he's going to lift the burden off of you. Uh, and he's going to say, come on, uh, come on, express a little joy uh, of the thrill uh, of being a child of God. Uh, amen. The joy of your salvation. Uh, just express it uh, unto God. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. No, 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 Brother White. No, no, no. You're not going to take this burden away from me. I've been bearing my burden with dignity for 29 years. Oh, don't worry. It'll be waiting for you when you get back outside the gate. You can have it all back. It's not the end of the day. We're not headed to the barn. Amen. We're not headed home. We'll all get to carry those burdens. Amen. On Saturday morning. Amen. Sunday evening. We'll all get to get them all back. Don't, don't get paranoid. God ain't about to take that away from you. He just going to give you a little opportunity to restore your joy in him. <laughs> Replenish that strength that God uh, intends for you to have uh, as an overcoming child of God. Anybody join with me and say, Preacher, I want a restoration of joy this week. Uh, I want it. Uh, I want it. Uh, I I'm preaching uh, holiness. Uh, I'm living holiness. Uh, I I I'm doing that to the best of my ability. Uh, but I've got to have an equal portion uh, of joy uh, that goes along with it uh, to keep it perpetuating uh, for my world. Uh, let's sing unto the Lord uh, a song of praise here tonight. Well, I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. Me. I, I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. 